Hello YouTubers, this is the Nubifier. Each year on the 10th of December, I take a look at the state of the game by taking a look at the videos that I make, the topics that I covered, so that we can see what's been achieved. The 10th of December is a special day for the channel because it was the 10th of December four years ago that I started making content for Star Citizen. The first videos are really rough, but through feedback from you, the community, it's evolved to what I have now. For curiosity's sake, I have your one, two, and three linked in the description, and I'd like to begin with some statistics. The Patreon community has provided $6,000 in ships as prizes for giveaways over the year. That's an average of $500 per month, back to you, and towards development. This year, there were a total of 216 videos published, 7.5 million minutes watched, 2.2 million views, and a channel growth of 7,400 subscribers. We begin with the first video of the year covering VR Sim Racing. Monster Tech launched MTX Sim, and to make good use of it, I purchased some Sim gear from Fnatic and HTC Vive, and set to work lowering my lap times. I play regularly, but I'd like to keep that content to a minimum here, as I'd like to keep the channel mostly Star Citizen focused. Ship Fight Hawk vs Stalker was another installment in that series, where I put two similar ships in similar price brackets against each other to find out which is the better ship. Calling All Devs summaries happened every single time Jared sat down with the developers. These continued until Calling All Devs was abandoned by CIG, to which I feel is a massive loss to the community. Of all the official CIG shows, the simple format was the most useful to us, as our questions were answered by the person best qualified. It also seems odd because the format seems to be the least likely to take the developer away from work for a very long time. I think the show format should be brought back. The roadmap was extended all the way to 3.6, so these were broken down to anticipate the next additions to the PU. That week was also the first time that CIG finally released the roadmap for Squadron 42, which is another great indicator for features that may be added to the PU. Anytime the roadmap either extends into a new patch or was massively updated, it got covered this year. Ship Fight Hornet vs 325A was next, and that sparked a short video proposing to CIG a 335C, which is a 300 series, with more cargo. Then ship fight Gladius vs Arrow, plus a rundown of the announced changes that were incoming for the Vanguard series that sparked another new video. That new video idea had a very simple aim, which was to offer a fully gimbaled nose option for the Vanguard, making it more universal to all pilots. Buccaneer vs Arrow ship fight followed, and then a video asking how the original hardcore permadeath from 2013 could actually be implemented with the current planned game mechanics. It seems that the closer we get to a complete game, the harder it is to imagine that permadeath could actually be put into the game as it was pitched in 2013. CIG released some updated information about how hull and component insurance would work, which was broken down for you, followed by updated information on Gravlev, the issues with it to date, and the proposed updates. I needed to build a PC for the VR rig, I wanted to do so on a budget, so I documented that build, and then broke down the performance per dollar value. Game Glass was an up-and-coming better MFD, which proposed a high-quality graphical interface with minimal latency that operated on a tablet. I tried my best to spread the word about the campaign on Indiegogo. The goal was surpassed by a margin of 600%. The project successfully launched, on time, and with great success. You should totally check out Game Glass. It was around this time for the official release of the MTX Simrig from Monster Tech. This was the first of several videos detailing how the modular design could be used to offer you the foundation for all your simulation needs. I was offered a chance to test the MFG crosswind pedals to see if the hype was real. It is, they're fantastic, and I appreciated them reaching out to me. CIG has drastically changed how the throttle worked, adding a central neutral position for HOTAS pilots. Because the Verpal MT50 throttle has a user-defined center detent or bump, I made a video discussing how I used this to my advantage after those changes. Then we had a fantastic breakdown of Todd Pappy's hour-long RTV session. Reverse the Pappy is always a fantastic opportunity to get up to speed with the current and near-current game developments. Auto Gimbal was first presented by Todd Pappy as Auto Convergence or PIP Harmonization. Originally this seemed like a fantastic thing. Then we got some conflicting information that it was actually Auto Aim. Technically both were correct, because there were actually two new modes added. This underscores the confusion that CIG can actually prevent. CIG. All you need to do is approach the future subjects from a fan's perspective and remember that we lack the corporate knowledge. 
All we ever want you to do is figure out what you want to say, make an assessment on how it might be interpreted by the community, and then add all the extra detail to make it a clear and complete thought explained properly upon announcement. You could save so much time backpedaling and in damage control just by doing this. We the community are worth that extra effort. The Argo SRV was released a concept with some very funny topics, including if it was the universe's perfect ship to troll other players with. For that, you'd just go up to any random player's ship and drag it away. The SRV tow truck introduces some fantastic search and rescue missions, plus a new service that we can do within the universe. Other concepts throughout the year each got their regular videos. The Drake Corsair Explorer, the Ranger Bikes, the Ballista Sam, the Nautilus Mine Layer, the Mantis Interdictor, the Pisces Nub, and of course, the $2,000 Drake Privateer Shopping Center. The video Joystick Fight was meant to be a funny boxing-themed video where I took my expanding collection of grips and gimbals, tempered with my hands-on experience, and let them battle it out. Some of you didn't appreciate the ring announcer format. It was fun to flex my creativity a little bit, and whether you love it or hate it, it wasn't a waste of my time from my perspective. The patch notes for Evocati 3.5 were leaked, plus the first part of the series Exposed, where I take apart my gear to see what components are used. I do this to look at the engineering that goes into each piece of gear in an attempt to quantify value and longevity. Ship fight Corsair vs Andromeda, and then a short video about the announcement that CIG made that some of the $0 CCUs would be called from your buyback list. We got a rare RTV with Chris Roberts, and as corny as it sounds, the community greatly benefits from him taking the time to answer our questions live. Jared, please try to make this the standard thing once every two or three months. CIG explained how the character DNA blending would work, and at that time, I also got a chance to check out Verpal's new Warbird Grip, the most minimalistic and perfect controller, whose only fault is that it's only right-handed. To improve productivity, I upgraded my main monitor to a 49-inch 32x9, which resulted in a first impressions video. That change also ended up making a second video, as I needed to upgrade to a 2080 Ti just to drive the extra resolution. I would never go back, and it was well worth the cost. There was some more definition of how the Vanguard center section would behave. Was it a variant, module, or buck? All the updated information was pumped out in a short video that explained what was going on. We had another Todd Pappy in exactly two minutes, and then I published my impressions and opinions about the Forbes article. 3.5.1 notes were leaked from Evo, and then we got our first information about the future of caves within Star Citizen. At the time, there were some grumblings about feature creep, but now that we have caves and FPS mining, I'm pretty sure that most will agree that it's pretty awesome. The updated 300i and the new customizer was launched, which basically allowed you to modify the base loadout for real money. Most of the options were aesthetic, however people quickly realized that if you had LTI on the ship and then upgraded it, the upgraded weapons would then also be LTI. The implications for the system being applied to very large ships was discussed in a video called Upgrade My Javelin. We then started to get our first look at the soon-to-be-released 890 Jump, and then we started to hear about Hover Mode. Hover Mode lasted one patch, and then it was removed because, among other things, it made vertical landing at Hurston very impractical. With 3.6, we got a fantastic long pillar talk with a glimpse into the future of what would be coming in the coming months. This show segment is very important to the community, and it would be nice to get at least two per year locked down into a schedule. 3.6 went to live I reviewed a gaming desk and then further broke down the new changes to the throttle system because this is when they added the new acceleration and power limits. I flew a bunch and tested to see if 3.6 had improved fixed weapon aim. It didn't really. I updated an older video on Star Citizen dropships and then also added a new entry to the job series, The Professional Fighter Pilot. The Valve Index was released to the US and I was lucky to get my hands on one in Canada for my review and personal use. This truly is the next level in VR, and it comes highly recommended. The devs demonstrated the progress on Microtech, and Verpal sent me their new gimbal. The MT50CM2 gimbal is perfect for those who want to use extensions. These reviews and teardown videos are always uploaded so that the community can choose their gear armed with the information that they need to make such an important investment in gear. The 890 Jump was released finally after almost five years of waiting. It didn't disappoint, and I posted a full tour. We were told for years that SSOCS was critical for the expansion of our universe and the addition of future content. I actually researched for five days to get a full working understanding of the terms used by the industry and then how they relate specifically to Star Citizen. The video was well received, 
Many appreciated the bite-sized info of the complex topic, and I have it linked up for you right now. Oh boy. This is when we got staggered development presented by Aaron, mislabeled as a second pillar talk. This wasn't exactly what we were expecting. The last pillar talk was so good that the community basically lost it all over social media for a full week. Caves, FPS mining, player inventories, and some more leaks for patch 3.7. Verpal and Bird collaborated to make a new top tier pedal kit, which got a great review. And it was around this time that I started to work on the flight model video. Flying around and dogfighting are the things that I want to do the most in Star Citizen. A year of uncertainty about the flight model set me into trying to put into words everything that I feel about what we had, what we have now, and why one might be better than the other. This was another script that took over seven days to flesh out, and I did get exactly the outcome that I wanted. Discussion and comments about the video. Lots of discussion. It was interesting to hear how many people don't play because of the flight model, and also those of you who actually appreciate the new changes. The roadmap was pushed all the way to 4.0, there were some items shuffled around, and now we're getting nearer to CitizenCon. Ugh, the Pisces was leaked, the Carrick was delayed till February, and I spent a full day live with Salty Mike and Crucian Gaming watching the panels. The panels from stage 1 were recorded, rendered, and uploaded within 70 minutes because CIG normally takes a week to do this, and this is the most important information to get out immediately. Now we get into 7 days of expo, the anniversary sale, and once the dust settled from that, I began to eat through one panel per day, condensing it as I do in a no bullshit format. The last video before this one were my thoughts about CitizenCon, what it means for the game project, what I think of the future, and of course, a bit of excitement for 2020. And there it is, a year in review through the videos and topics that I covered. Four years seems crazy, but I'm actually humbled by your support, it drives me forward to improve, and of course to continue what I started. My most sincere thank you. My wife and I wish that you have a great holiday season with your friends and family. Please stay tuned for more. I'm far from done. Fly safe and I'll see you in the verse.